Hello everyone, this is Noblish Bushtack, and today we are going to speedrun the AB, Calc AB free response questions from 2019. It is May 16th, 2019, so the people who actually took the AB exam took these questions two days ago, but I didn't take the AB exam this year, so I'm seeing these questions for the first time. Uh, I have a stopwatch ready. Let me just reset that. I have a stopwatch ready, and then I have my workspace ready, where I will be showing all my work. I'll also be commentating on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, so that this video isn't completely boring and will hopefully be of use to people studying for calc exams next year. So yeah, I'm basically ready, so here we go. Fish enter the lake at a rate modeled by the function e of t equals 20 plus 15 sine of e. Yeah. Fish leave the lake at a rate modeled by the function l of t equals 4 plus 2. Yes, okay, cool. Both e of t and l of t are measured in fish per hour, and t is measured in hours since midnight. So first thing, this complicate this function looks very complicated. So I'm going to get my graphic color out because I don't think I can do any of these integrals by hand, in case I need to do integrals. Um, how many fish enter the lake over the five hour period from midnight to 5 a.m.? Give you answer to the nearest whole number. So, uh, this is the rate at which fish enter the lake. So, integral from 0 to 5 of e of t dt is the integral from 0 to 5 of 20 plus 15 sine of, what is it? If pi, yes, pi t over 6 uh, dt. And I'm just going to do that on my graphing calculator, which I will do off screen, but. Hopefully, you at home can follow with me on your own graphic calculator. So I'm getting 101.7132, which I'm going to go into this whole number, so 102 fishies. Yes, okay, cool. So... 1B, what is the average no average number of lake that leave the lake per hour over the from midnight to 5 a.m.? Okay, so leave the lake is this function, and then average means that we divide the integral by the amount of time, which is in this case five hours. So 1B, um, so I'm going to take one fifth of the integral from 0 to 5 of L of t dt. Can I type? Probably not. Okay, cool. And that is. Four plus two to the zero point one t squared. What a great function! Uh, yes. Okay. Copy that down. Right. So I'm just take that integral on my graph calculator again. So one fifth times the integral from zero to five of four plus two to the point one t squared. Great function. So that it comes out to six point zero five nine zero. Do I have to round? They don't tell me to add, so I'm going to say that's 0 0.6059 fishes per hour, because units. Cool. Okay. At what time, T, is the, they're the greatest number of fish in the lake? Okay. So how are we given? Oh, so we're not given how many fish are in the lake at midnight, but that's okay. Um, so if we, let's say, let f of t be the number of fishes in the lake. So clearly, f prime, can I? Yes, f prime of t is e of t minus l of t, because fish are entering at a rate of e of t and leaving at a rate of l of t. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, f of t minus f of 0 equals the integral from 0 to t of e of s minus l of s ds, where s is just a dummy variable. So we want to find the maximum of f of t. So one way we can do that is by finding all of the zeros of e of t minus l of t. So I want to make this more demonstrative. I'm going to use a graphic calculator here because otherwise I can't really show you anything. So I'm going to graph f prime of t, which is 20 plus 15 e of t equals 20 plus 15 sine of pi t over 6, and l of t equals, I don't, don't want to graph that, um, 4 plus 2 to the point 0.1 t, t squared. Cool. I don't want to graph that. I want to graph e of x minus l of x. <laughs> okay, so, and I'm only looking on the range from 0 to 8, so I can kind of go from here, and we want to find it, well, either the maximum is going to be at t equals 0, 
it's going to be a t equals 8, or it's going to be where the derivative is 0. And you can kind of see it goes, the derivative goes from positive to negative, so we know that this is a at least a local maximum because it's going from increasing to decreasing. So one of our, zero, the, our only zeros is 6.204, so we need to check. Actually, this equation doesn't matter. I don't know why I wrote that. So f prime of t equals 0 means that t is 6.204. So if t is 0, oh, I, I know why. Oops. I do need this equation. Okay, so if t is 0, then obviously, I forgot about minus half of 0, very important. f of 0 equals f of 0, because that hopefully that's obvious, I don't need to explain that. If t is 6.204, then f of 6.204 is f of 0 plus the integral from 6.204 of e of s minus l of s ds. And can I do that here? Hopefully. Yes, I can. Cool. cool. 6.204 of e of s minus l of s ds is 135.0149. So 135.0149 plus f of 0 because I don't really know what f0 is, and t equals 8. In that case, we kind of just do the same thing, but we plug in 8 instead, so. And that is, let's just take this to an 8. 80.91, uh, 9200, okay, so 80.9200 plus f0. Clearly, uh, and this is probably not the correct way to word this in the AP Calc AP answer, but I'm going to do it anyway. Clearly, from the analysis above, uh, f of t is maximized at t equals 6.204. What is the actual? Yeah, so. Yes. That's it. Hopefully, that is correct according to the AP Calc AB rubric. I don't really remember the rubric, but we're going to go with it. Is the rate of change in the number of fish in the lake increasing or decreasing at 5 a.m.? Okay, so as I said before, um, f prime of t, the number of the rate of change of the number of fish in the lake is e of t minus l of t. So f prime of five, yes, is e of five minus l of five, which is 17.8431. Okay, 17.8431. Uh, fishes per hour, so. And then, I can use this f prime of 5 to justify the fact that the rate of change, oh, the rate of change in the number of fish is increasing or decreasing. So I actually want to find, oops, I actually want to find f prime prime of t. I want to find the rate of change that holds f of t is increasing or decreasing. So, that is e prime of t minus l prime of t. And if I have to show my work find the derivative, so it is um, 15 sixths cosine of pi t over 6 um, plus 0 0.1 2t, and hopefully uh, you know chain rule, because I'm just going to kind of keep going here, ln of 2, uh, 2 to the 0 0.1 t squared, okay, hopefully that's right, oh sorry, this should be a minus sign here, okay, so, yeah, and then I just need to find that for 5. So, f prime of 5 equals 15 6 cosine pi of 6 minus 0 0.1. Oh, sorry. Uh, 2 times 5 times ln of 2 times 2 to the point 1 times 5 squared. Nope. Times 5. Point 0.1 times 5 squared. So that is negative 0 0.60861. And to check my answer, I can also just use numerical derivatives. So this will give me the numerical derivative. Ooh, I did something wrong. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to put a pi here. Yeah, so that now, okay, so I should fix that here. So remember to always remember your pi's when you're doing chain rule. So yeah, this is the correct derivative, and then if I plug in 5, I get negative 10 point, yes. I wish I remembered if AP Calc AB allows me 
to use the numerical derivative or if I actually have to take the derivative, but I only took the derivative, so it's too late. And then our unit is fishes per hour squared. And then I can use this as a justification. So f prime prime of 5 is negative. So the rate of change in the number of fish in the lake f prime of t is decreasing at t equals 5, at 5 a.m. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. And then, oh, I'm done. Okay, so. 2a. The velocity of a particle p is moving along the x-axis is given by the principal function vp, where vp of t is measured in meters per hour, and t is measured in hours. Selected values of vp of t are shown in the table above. Particle p is at the origin. Cool. So, uh, okay. Okay. Justify why there must be at least one time t between these two. Where vp prime of t... Okay, so this is a classic... Rolle's theorem problem because v p of t and if point the two point eight zero equal, so there has to be some point where the acceleration is zero. So I'm just going to justify that by saying by excuse me, okay, uh, by okay. So since uh, v p of zero point three equals v p of two point eight by Rolle's theorem. Um, since, and then the other condition is that and vp is a differentiable function by Rolle's theorem, there exists some point, uh, some time t, uh, between 0.3, some time t between, on the interval, that's probably more effective interval 0 0.3 2.8 such that v p prime of t equals 0 i.e. the acceleration is 0. So hopefully that's enough justification for calc a b. Again I don't remember the specific wording from the class but that's the basic concept that you need. Okay almost 12 minutes left. Um, Use trapezoidal sum with the subintervals 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 1.7, and 1.7 to 2.8 to approximate the value of this integral. Okay, so first I'm just going to write down a trapezoid. So it's 1 half times height plus the sum of the bases. So here the height would be the width of the interval, and the bases are the value of the velocity at those times. So I can split the integral up into our different intervals. So from 0 to 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 to 1.7 plus 1.7 to 2.8 and then I can use the formula to approximate the integrals so 1 half times 0 0.3 times v of 0 plus v of 0 0.3 plus 1 half times 1.4 times v of 0 0.3 plus v of 1.7 plus 1 half times 1.1 times v of 1.7 plus v of 2.8 and then I'm just going to plug in the values so 0 plus 55 and then 55 minus 29 and then negative 29 plus 55. And then I think I can type that into here. Hopefully it'll make a typo. Yes. Oh. Okay, so that is 40.75 meters. Yes. Okay, so we're done with that part. 
The second particle q moves along the x-axis so that its velocity is between 0 and 4 given by 45 square roots t cosine that you get the point. You find the interval which includes the velocity of particle u is at least 60 meters per hour. Find the distance traveled by particle q during the interval when the velocity of the particle is at least 60 meters per hour. Okay. So the easiest way to do this is just to graph it. So I should probably erase my things for problem one. Um, 45 square, square root x uh, cosine 0 0.063 x squared. Oh boy. So we should probably zoom in here. Actually, because this doesn't have like a window, um, the easiest way to figure out when it's over 60 is to subtract by 60 and then figure out when it's positive. So you can kind of see it's positive between these two intervals. So that means the velocity of Q is over 60 in between 1.866 and 3.519. So from, I'm not exactly sure how the AP exam wants me to word this, but from a graph of v q of t, and then I'll repeat the function for good measure, a cosine of 0 0.063 t squared, t squared, uh, it can be seen that v q of t is greater than 60 for, um, on the time interval, uh, 1.866 to 3.519. Okay. And then find the distance traveled by particle Q during the interval when the velocity of the particle is at least 60 meters per hour. Okay. So distance is the integral of velocity. So I should probably say distance equals 1.866, 3.519. Um, usually you would put absolute value signs, although in this case you don't really need to since it's over 60, so obviously it's positive. So the integral from 1.866 to 3.519 of 45 square root t cosine of 0 0.063 t squared dt is, um, if I say this is q of x, and then I can take the numerical derivative again of 1.866. Uh, what's the upper? 3.519. And then 1.866 of q of x dx. 106.1092 uh, meters. Nice. Okay. Nope, 2D. I double did problem one. 2D. Okay. At time t0 is uh, it's at x equals negative 90 using the result from part b and vq approximate the distance between particles p and q at time t equals 2.8 oh i see so um particle p is at the origin at time t equals zero so that means this is the position of v of particle p at 2.8 so let's make that clear so let p of t be the position of particle p at time t and for good measure let q of t be the position of particle q at time q at time t so uh v of oh, p of 2.8 is 0 plus the integral from 0 to 2.8 of v p of t dt and that is That's 40.75 meters. <coughs> Q of 2.8 is Q of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 2.8 of VQ of T. So Q of 0 is negative 90. And then we already know what VQ of T is. Oh, I forgot a DT here. Very important. t squared dt and then i can just do that here so negative 90 plus the integral from 0 to 2.8 yes of q of t or x or t dt 45.9377 
I also don't know how many decimal places they want, but okay. Um, and then the distance is the absolute value of their positions, of the difference of their positions. So absolute value of 40.75 minus 45.9377 is, I'm going to use this. So we put that in parentheses. I don't know where that's going to go. Okay. And then what's the other 40.75 minus that is 5.1877. 5.1877 meters, and I think we are done there. How much time do I have? I have less than I, oh, I've done okay. So it took me less than 20 minutes to do the first section, which usually takes 30 minutes. So I guess that's normal, it's not really that fast, unfortunately. Um, no calculus loud. Okay, goodbye. Um, I, I should probably split, just so I know section 1 took me 20 minutes. The continuous function f is defined on the closed interval that. Uh, oh, negative 6 to 5. The figure shown above shows a portion, okay, not the whole thing, consisting of two lines, segments, and a quarter of a circle. Oh, good to know. It is known that 3, three minus square is 5 is on the graph of f. Cool. If that is 7, find negative 6 to negative 2. Okay, so here we are giving negative 2 to 5, and here we're giving negative 6 and 5, so we want to find negative 6 and negative 2. So the way we do this is by splitting up the integral, so section 2 part b, 3a. Okay, so the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f of x dx is that from negative 6 to 5 f of x dx minus that from negative 2 to 5 f of x dx. And actually, I'm going to split it up for though. This line goes from negative 2 to 0, so I'm going to say uh, minus negative 2 to 0 f of x dx minus uh, the integral from 0 to 2 minus the integral from 2 to 5. Okay, so what is negative 6 to 5? That's 7. Um, <coughs> this, I don't know how I'm supposed to justify this, but you kind of see like this triangle is 1 half and this triangle is negative 1 half. So the integral of that is 0. Um, I'm going to try to justify that somehow. Uh, integral of negative 2, 0 fx dx is 0 because the area uh, under f of x from negative 2 to negative 1 is 1 half, and the area under f of x from negative 1 to 0 is negative 1 half, so the total integral is 0. Okay, cool. Um, it's from 0 to 2. Um, it's probably easiest to find... No, I don't, I don't want to do that, actually. Actually, I do. I, if, what's the equation of this line? It goes from 0, negative 1 to... Um, 2, 3. Okay, so uh, f of x from on the interval 0, 2 goes from negative 1 to 3, so it has a slope of uh, 3 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 0. So that slope is 2, and y intercept of negative 1, thus f of x equals 2x minus 1 for um, x in 0, 2. Then we can just take the integral of that. Uh, that's not how integrals work. Yes, they, they, there you go. Okay. okay, so this is x squared minus 2x, and then... Um, yes, so for 2, I get 2 squared minus 2 squared. Did I mess up? Yes, I did. Okay. So this should just be x. I don't know why I said 2x. Uh, 2 squared minus 2 minus 0 squared minus 0. So that is 4 minus 2 equals 0. It equals 2. That looks about right. So the so the integral from 0 to 2 is 2. And then this is a circle. So, okay. Um, what's the equation of the circle? Okay. So uh, f of x on the interval to 5 is a circle centered at what does it say? 5, 3. Nice. With radius, um, obviously radius 3 because this is 5, 0, so with radius 3. So, x 
uh, x minus 5 squared plus f of x minus 3 squared equals 3 squared, just from the equation of a circle. And then I'm going to hopefully college board doesn't document this. Actually, I should probably show my work here, right? f x minus 3 squared equals 9 minus x minus 5 squared. Um, take the square root f x minus 3 equals square root 9 minus x minus 5 squared. Okay, add 3 to both sides. There we go. Okay, so the integral. And I do not have a graphing calculator. Oh, oh, wait. I'm supposed to find the area of this circle, aren't I? That would make more sense. Then finding the equation and taking the integral of the square root. Okay, never mind. So, the area under the curve is the area of a 3x3 three three square, because this is 3x3, three three, minus the area of a quarter circle of radius 3. That is a much easier way to solve this integral. Uh, so the area of a 3 by 3 squared is 3 squared minus the quarter circle, so that is 1 fourth pi 3 squared. So our final answer is 9 minus 9 fourths pi. Oh wait, that's not a final answer. I still need to do all of this. Okay, so to reiterate, the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f of x dx is 7 minus 0 minus 2 minus 9 plus 9 fourths pi. I'm distributing the negative. So 7 minus 11 is negative 4, so we get 9 fourths pi minus 4. Okay, that is our final answer. That took way too long. I'm sorry, you have a, oh, that took me 6 minutes. That's a long time. Oh, I have an hour, so I'm good. Evaluate this integral. Okay, this doesn't seem too bad. Um, so, first I'm just going to write down the integral. It's the integral from d to 5 of 2 f prime of x plus 4 dx. Uh, oh, so I want to take the 4 out. Uh, so I want to split the integral up, but basically. So, 2 f prime of x dx plus 4 dx. So, this integral is like 4 times 5 minus 3. So, that's 8. And then this integral, I can take the 2 out, which will make things easier. So, f prime of x dx plus... 4, 5 minus 3. Okay. Now, the next step, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, because this is f prime of x, uh, this is f of 5 minus f of 3, so 2 f of 5 minus f of 3 plus 4 times 2. And what is f of 5? Oh, so f of 3 is that, because they tell us, and then f of 5 is 0, because the graph. Equals 2, 3 minus the square root of 5 minus 0 plus 8 is 6 plus 8 is 14 minus 2 to the square root of 5. Hopefully I can do arithmetic. That looks right. I hope that's not wrong. Okay, 3c. Function g is given by that. Um, find the absolute maximum value of g. Justify your answer. So a local maximum will appear uh, wherever g prime of x, which is f of x. Okay, so... Do I have to write that down? Like, it was that obvious. Um, I'm going to do it anyway. So, the derivative of g of x is f of x. Um, so, any local maximum occurs when f of x goes from positive to negative. And that really only occurs here. It could have occurred at 5, but 5 is an endpoint, so I'm going to check that anyway. So this only occurs at x equals negative 1. Therefore, the absolute maximum on the interval negative 2, 5 is either at x equals negative 2 x equals 1, or x equals 5. Endpoints are very important. Don't forget the endpoints. Um, okay, so I guess I just need to allow the integral at that, all of those points. So the integral of negative 2 to negative 2 of f of x dx, which I should clarify, that's g of negative 2. Hopefully, it's obvious that's 0. So g of 1, okay, 
So g of 1 is the integral from negative 2 to 1 f of x dx. I'm going to split this up into negative 2 to 0 f of x dx, and then uh, 0 to 1. The reason I split that up, because I already did this, so the integral from negative 2 to 0 is 0. And then um, I think the function I found was 2x minus 1, yeah. So that is x squared minus x. I'm going to use this thing from 0 to 1. So that's 1 squared minus, okay, no, no, minus 1 minus 0 squared minus 0. That's 1. Very helpful. The answer is 0. Okay. Um, and then g of 5 is not 0, I assume. Uh, oh, did I not? I figured this out. Um, so fx dx equals. So I know what. I know that because negative 6 to 5, because they tell me it's 7. And then I know this negative 2 to negative. No, sorry. Negative 6 to negative 2 because I did that before. So this is 7 minus. Um, that, 9 fourths pi minus 4, so that is 11 minus 9 fourths pi, which pi is like 3, so 9 times 3 fourths is less than 9, so 11 minus something less than 9 is positive, so g of 5 is positive while these are 0, so obviously g of 5 is the biggest. From the above, it can clearly be seen that negative 2 equals g of 1 equals 0, while uh, g of 5 is positive, so the, what is it called, or what is it, oh, so the absolute maximum value of g of x is g of 5 equals uh, 9 fourths pi, oh wait, no, 11 minus 9 fourths pi, that is not 11, that is, okay, cool. 3D, find something? Oof. Okay. So, the limit... I'm just going to copy this, because that's a lot to take in. 10 to the x minus 3f prime of x over f of x minus uh, inverse 10 of x. <coughs> Thanks, College Board. Um, so here, you can see that uh, 3 at, at 1, our slope is 2, so actually I should probably, on the, I'm just going to repeat this for clarity, on the interval 0, 2, f of x equals 2x minus 1, therefore, f prime of 1 is 2. Does that help us? Yes, okay. And then f of 1, because at the limit, I'm just going to plug in. 2 for f prime of x, in case that wasn't clear, from the graph, f of 1 is 1. So, I'm just going to move this limit down here. Periods, punctuation, okay, cool. Equals, I think I just plug 1 in, hopefully, is this really that easy? 10 minus 6 over 1 minus um, pi over 4, I assume? Oh, 10 of 1. So if you think of a x, x, x squared is 2 of triangle, that um, 10 of pi over 4 is 1 in that triangle. So oh, 10 of 1 is pi over 4. So 10 minus 1 is 4. So we get 1, 4 over 1 minus pi over 4. Multiply both denominator and numerator by 4. So we get 16 over 4 minus pi. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Nice. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake there. Oh, cool. How I have okay. That was okay. I have thirty-three minutes so far. <clears throat> How many problems are there? There's four problems in the section. Okay, so I have three more left. A cylindrical barrel with diameter two feet collects rainwater. The water drains out through a valve. The rate of change of the height is differential equation. Woohoo. Okay, and then the volume is yes. Okay, find the rate of change of the volume of water in the barrel with respect to time when the height is four feet. Oh, so this, they give you this formula, so I'm just going to plug 4 into that formula. Wait, am I reading this wrong? Hopefully it's not, it's not that easy, is it? Oh, volume. Okay, it's not that easy. Cool. So, V of T is pi O squared H. H o is constant, so that becomes 4 pi H. So, dV over dt. 
actually I'm gonna say v pi infinity it's easier um is four pi h pi infinity and then that becomes negative four pi over ten square root h. So v prime of t where h of t equals four is negative four pi negative four pi oh sorry the radius is one so this is pi h that's close the diameter is two the radius is one negative pi over ten square roots of four is negative pi over five um feet per feet cubed per second wait yes I think I did that right. I just want to read, read this. Water is draining out so it's negative. Okay, I think that's right. Cool. When the height of the water is 3 feet, is the rate of change of the height of the water increasing or... Oh, okay. So, is dh over dt increasing or decreasing at 3 feet? Okay, so... Let's figure that out. Decreasing with respect to time, yes, okay. So the derivative of the derivative is by power rule um, negative one twentieth over square roots of h. So negative one over twenty square roots of h. There you go. So if I plug three into there, Uh, I'm gonna say h prime prime of three because that's oh actually no h prime prime of t where h of t equals three is negative one over twenty squared to three so that's negative so at h equals three h prime prime of t is negative so the rate of change in of the height of water with respect to time is decreasing it seems so especially easy i feel like i'm missing something i just want to be careful try to try to water carefully okay i think i don't think i'm missing anything 4c at time t equals zero the water of the the height of the water is five feet use separation of variables okay so this is what we're all expecting Solving differential equations. Okay, so dh over the square root of h is negative dt over 10. If I take the integral of that, of both sides, so I should probably denote that I'm taking the integral. So from the, uh, it says the height of the water is 5 feet, so I want to take it from 5 to h. dh over the square root of h equals the integral from 0. <coughs> t of dt over 10, oh sorry, negative, and then, so the integral of h to the negative 1 half is negative 2 square root h, yes, and then this always just becomes negative t over 10, except I took the integral from 5 to h, so I should probably denote that, uh, 5 to h, and this integral was from 0 to t. So if I plug in those values, it becomes negative 2 square roots h plus 2 square roots 5 equals negative t over 10. And then if I solve for square root h, then this becomes negative t over 10 minus 2 square roots 5 divided by both sides by negative 2. We get square root h equals, uh, yes. Um, t over 20 plus square roots 5 and then you square both sides what an intuitive answer t over 20 plus square root 5 squared great and then if i take the derivative of that that's going to become 2 t over 20 plus square root 5 times 1 over 20 by chain rule so that is one tenth square root of h so Did I miss a negative? Hmm. 
wait. Yes, this negative should not be here. Okay. So this is minus. This becomes plus. This. Oh, but that's this stays um. um if I divide by two, then this be stays a negative, um, and this stays a negative. So it's good to think I caught that. So minus t over twenty. Hopefully you see this should not be negative. So I don't know why I put a negative sign there, but squared five minus t over twenty squared. So if I take the derivative of that, negative one over twenty times by chain rule times two times squared five minus t over twenty. So that satisfies the differential equation. So my answer is correct. And then at zero, the water over the height is five feet. Good. Uh, so for 40 minutes, let O be the region enclosed by these graphs, and then vertical line x equals 2. So that's right there, and then y-axis. Find the area of O. So 5a, the area of O is the integral from 0 to 2 of, which one's top top? This one. Okay. Negative 2 plus... Three. Oh, sorry. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So this is g of x, because at 0, this would be 1. And then h of x, uh, 6 minus 2 is 4. So that's this one. So h of x is on top. And I'm not allowed to use calculator. Okay. So the integral from 0 to 2 of 6 minus 2, x minus 1 is squared. Minus uh, negative 2, so uh, plus 2, minus 3. Cosine pi over 2x dx. So that equals 6x minus um, 2x minus 1 cubed over 3 plus 2x uh, minus 3, no, uh, uh, minus 6 over pi, because I'm dividing by pi over 2, so 3 over pi over 2 is 6 over pi, sine of pi over 2, no, yes, Pi of 2x. <coughs> From 0 to 2. So, if I plug in 2, then I get 12 minus 2... 2 minus 1, yes, 2 thirds plus 4 minus 6 over pi... Sine of pi is 0. Okay, and then minus... If I plug in 0, I get 0 minus plus 2 thirds because 0 minus 1 cubed is negative 1, and then negative cancel, plus 0 minus 6 over pi times sine of 0, this, so that's also 0. Okay, so in total, I get 12 plus 4 is 16, minus 2 thirds, minus 2 thirds, because this 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 minus 2 thirds and that minus 2 thirds. So that, uh, 16 times 3 is 48, 40, so 44 thirds. That is our final answer. Okay. Cool. 5b. Region O is the base of a solid for the solid at each x. The cross section perpendicular. Oh, so this is the area. It doesn't tell you what shape the cross section is, it just tells you the area. That's odd, but okay. So find the volume of a solid. So the volume of a solid is literally just the integral of the area. So from 0 to 2, a of x dx dx over x plus 3, the integral of x plus 3 is ln of x plus 3 from 0 to 2. Oh yeah, so ln of 5 minus ln of 3, I don't know if they, I don't know which one they would accept as simplified, ln of 5 minus ln of 3 over ln of 5 thirds, so I'm just going to write both. Uh, to me, this one kind of seems more simplified, but maybe they want the condensed form, I don't know. 5c rate, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when you rotate it on y equals 6. y equals 6 is all the way up here. And so just to be clear, the maximum of h of x is at x equals 1 because this is a quadratic and this is in vertex form. So everything is under y equals 6. So you don't need to worry about something that's above y equals 6. That makes this problem a bit easier. So uh, because we're uh, integrating over the y-axis, and we have two curves, I'm going to use Walsh's method. So, the integral from the integral from 0 to 2 of pi, and then notice that g of x is further away from the y equals 6 line, so 
pi of 6 minus g of x squared minus the inner washer, which is 6 minus h of x squared dx. And equals, and I'm going to put the pi out front because that's probably easier. So you have 2 of 6 plus 2 minus 3 cosine of that, whatever that is, pi x over 2 squared minus 6 minus 6 plus 2 uh, x minus 1 squared squared dx so equal that equals pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 8 minus 3 cosine I, I'm not typing okay integral from 0 to 2 of 8 minus 3 cosine pi x 2 squared minus the 6 is cancelled, that's nice. Uh, so 4 x minus 1 to the 4th. Wait, is this a... Okay, uh, I'm going to square that. This is a no calculator section, right? Okay. That's it. Okay. Equals pi. This looks like bc. Okay, whatever. 64 plus 9 cosine squared pi over 2x minus 2448. So the reason I'm saying BC is because cosine squared is an integral I learned from BC, so I'm surprised to see it here, but you know, go with the flow. Um, pi over 2x minus, that stays the same. So, in case you haven't learned this before, uh, cosine, nope, cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, so cosine squared theta is whatever that, how to solve equations, that, okay, so cosine squared of pi over 2x is cosine of pi plus 1 all over 2, so we get equals pi of 0 to 2, 64 stays the same, and then we get 9 halves times cosine of pi x plus 1. I'm going to distribute the 9 halves in one step just to make this faster. Minus 48 cosine of pi over 2x, minus 4x minus 1 to the 4th, I really hope I'm not making it with a mistake here, equals pi times 64 times... Uh, 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 64x plus 9 over 2 pi sine of pi x plus 9 halves x minus 48, oh uh, wait, actually 40, uh, 96 over pi uh, sine of pi over 2x uh, mi minus 4 fifths x minus 1 to the fifth. Isn't that just a great integral? So from 0 to 5. So if I plug in 5, what's 64 times 5? 320. Um, what's sine of 5 pi? 0. So I'm going to ignore that term. What is sine of 5 pi? Oh, of course, 9 halves times 5 is 45 halves. What's 5 pi over 2? That's basically pi over 2. So 1. So minus 96 over pi. Sine of 5 pi over 2 is 1, so that cancels. 5 minus... Why am I doing from 0 to 5? 0 to 2. Okay. That makes things easier. 128 plus sine of 2 pi is 0. 9, because 9 half times 2 is 9. Sine of pi is 0. So that ignore that term. Minus 4 fifths times 1 fifth to the fifth. Minus, if I plug in 0, 64 times 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. 9 half times 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So the only term that matters is this one. Minus negative 4 fifths, so I'm just going to make this positive. 4 fifths times negative 1, okay. Sorry, no, I should not have made that. So minus 4 fifths times negative 1, because negative 1 to the fifth is negative, yeah. So we have 3 negatives here, that's nice. Equals 128 plus 9 is 137, 137 times 5 is uh, 4. 500 plus 150 plus 35 is 185, 685. So 681 pi over 5 minus 4 pi over 5. That gives us 
677 pi over 5. I can't believe they put that in a non-calculated section on an EV exam. I'm so sorry for you all. And we have, okay, good time, good time. So I have 40, if this was the actual exam, I would have 40 minutes left, which I think is pretty good. Did I miss something? I hope that's right. I really hope that's right. I'd be very disappointed in myself if that's wrong. We've got a bunch of these. Okay, let's go on. Functions f, g, and h of twice differentiable. Ooh, very exciting. But with g of 2 equals h of 2 is 4, y is that is tangent to g and h at x equals 2. So what that tells you, tangent line, that tells you something about g prime of 2 and h prime of 2. So g prime of 2 is 2 thirds, h prime of 2 is 2 thirds. Also, g of 2 and h of 2, or whatever, is 4. Because if you plug 2 with this function, you get 4. So that's just something to realize. Find h prime of 2. I'll already tell you, h prime of 2 is 2 thirds, because tangent lines. Yeah. So whenever you see tangent line, that's what you should be thinking. What, is, what does this tell me about the function, and what does this tell me about the derivative? The derivative is 2 thirds. So h prime of 2 is 2 thirds because the tangent line to h of x at x equals 2 thirds has slope of 2 thirds. Oh, sorry, x equals 2. <coughs> okay. Let A be whatever this is. Okay. Um, find A prime of 2. Okay, so first find A prime of x. So A prime of x is product rule. So 9x squared h of x plus 3x cubed h prime of x. So first I should probably note h of 2 is uh, 4 plus 2 thirds 2 minus 2 equals 4 because the tangent line hits h of x at x equals 2. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically, the tangent line has the same value of h of x at x equals 2 because that's how tangent line work. So h of 2 is 4 and h prime of x, h prime of 2 is 2 thirds. So a prime of 2 is 9x squared times h of 2, which is 4, plus 3x cubed times h prime of x, so it's two thirds. So that's uh, 36 x squared plus two x cubed. Oh, x is two, so 36 times four. I find equal sign. 36 times four plus, that's helpful. Okay, so my internet went out, so I stopped the timer and then I tried to record again, but it, the my internet was still broken, and the timer kept running for 7 minutes and 12 seconds more. So, we're going to restart the timer and subtract 7 minutes and 12 seconds from our final time. Because this, I wasn't actually working on it, I was trying to fix the internet. So, start. Um, oh, I was here. So, I was trying to find a prime of 2. And a prime of 2 is 9 times 2 cubed, because x is 2 now, h of 2, but h of 2 is 4, I'll put that in later, 3 times 2 cubed, uh, times uh, h prime of 2, so that is 9 times 8 times 4, because h of 2 is 4, plus 3 times 8 times 2 thirds, I should probably fix that, c dot, not x dot, okay, and 9 times, oh sorry, this should be squared. 9 times 4 times 4 is 9 times 16, which is 144. 3 times 2 thirds is 2, times 8 is 16. 144 is 16 is 160. And that is a prime of 2. 6c. The function h satisfies this fraction for x is not equal to. It is known that the limit for a, as x approaches 2 of h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. So the limit of this fraction can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. Use that limit to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Interesting. So since we know that L'Hopital's rule applies, well, first off, since we know h of x is continuous, we have limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is h of 2. And that is 4, because I said that before. And then we have... Uh, oh, actually, I should probably put the fraction in. So limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 or 1 minus f of x cubed equals 4. Okay, so we want to find f of 2. 
first. So if L'Hopital's rule applies, that means the numerator is 0, which we can check 2 squared minus 4 is 0, and the denominator is 0. So if I plug in 2 for this denominator, it should be 0. So, um, since L'Hopital's rule applies, the denominator of this fraction is 0. So 1 minus f of 2 cubed is 0, because when I plug a 2 in, I should get 0 over 0. So if I solve for f of 2, I get f of 2 equals 1. Pretty simple. Then if I actually apply L'Hopital's rule, so take the derivative of the numerator, the limit as x approaches 2, uh, so x squared minus 4 is the, has derivative of 2x, and 1 minus f of x cubed has derivative minus 3 f prime of x, because chain rule, times f of 2 cubed, no, f of 2 squared, there we go, equals 4, because I took the derivative of the numerator and of the denominator. Oh, sorry, f of x squared, because not, we, then we plug in the 2, to, because I'm assuming that this L'Hopital's rule no, no longer applies, so I can just plug in 2 now. I'm not going to get a 0 over 0. So, when I plug in 2, I get 2 times 2, minus 3 f of 2, so sorry, minus 3 f prime of 2, times f of 2 squared, equals 4. So, um, multiply both sides by the denominator, 4 equals 4, times negative 3, f prime of 2, f of 2 squared. So, divide both sides by 4, you get 1 equals negative 3, f prime of 2, and then f of 2 squared, f of 2 is 1, because I found that before, so f of 2 squared can just be ignored, so it's negative 3, f prime of 2, times 1. So we divide by sides by negative 3, and get f prime of 2 is negative 1 third. Okay. Yes, and I think that's right. So 60, finally. Um, yes. So it is known that g of x is less than equal to h of x, for 1 is less than x is less than 3. Let k be a function between g and h, for 1 to 3. Is k continuous at x equals 2? This is a weird problem, because it's squeeze theorem, and you never see squeeze theorem problems. But we're going to do it anyway. Hopefully you know what squeeze theorem is. So, for the two conditions for squeeze theorem, since both g and h are continuous, so since g of x and h of x are continuous, and the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x equals the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is 4. Because remember the tangent line, if you have both g and h, um, have the same tangent line at x equals 2, then both g of x and h of x intersect at the same point at x equals 2, and they intersect at y equals 4. So, both of these limits equal 4. By those conditions, squeeze theorem applies. And by squeeze theorem, the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x must equal that of h of x. Or g of x, it doesn't matter which one you choose, since the limits are equal. And that equals 4. So, so, that tells us the limit as k, x approaches 2 of k of x is 4, which is one part of figuring out if k is continuous. The other part of figuring out if k is continuous is what is k of 2. So, k of 2, it doesn't actually give us a form of k, but it does give us this inequality, which we use for squeeze theorem. But the other thing we can use it for is for finding k of 2. So, if I plug in 2 into the inequality, I get this. So, what is g of 2? It's 4, because the tangent line, again. And then what's the h of 2? 4. So k of 2 is between 4 and 4. So k of 2 is 4. So you can see the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is 4. And k of 2 is 4. So it has to be continuous. So since the limit as x approaches 2. x. Nope. Oh boy. x approaches 2 of k of x equals k of 2. That's the definition of continuity. So k of x is continuous. Can I spell continuous? Yes, I can. Okay, add x equals 2. And we are done. Okay, so I'm ignoring this one because this was me trying to figure stuff out. So we take 19 minutes plus 59 seconds plus 52 plus 6, 8. Actually, this is the sum of all of the times, so I just subtract 7 minutes from that. So um, let me use a calculator. So 65 plus 
0.095 minutes, over 60 minutes. So these are the, this is the number of minutes in the calculator, minus this, so minus 7, minus 12.523, over 60. So these, this is the number of minutes uh, I ran. So 58.3, so 0.3, 0, 9, 5 times 60. So 58 minutes and 19 seconds, basically. So that's pretty good. 58 minutes, 19 seconds. It's, it's not as fast as I thought it would be. I thought it would be, be able to do it in half the time. I did really in two thirds of the time. 20 minutes for section one for part A, which took 30 minutes, and then 40 minutes for part B, which takes an hour. But it's pretty good. Less than an hour, which is nice. So yeah, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, which would give me a penalty of over an hour. But I probably did. If I go back here, um, it was yeah. This was a very hard integral problem. I did not expect this to come up at all. I mean, I expected solid revolutions. I didn't expect like to have to do the cosine squared thing. That's something from Calc BC, I think. Squeeze theorem was rather surprising, but it's in Calc AB, so it's not that surprising. I used Rolle's theorem once, which was interesting. But it's not mean value theorem comes in AB, so that's not too surprising either. But yeah, this was. Overall, pretty hard. Yeah. And to be honest, at least port B was hard. Port A wasn't too bad because you had a calculator. But port B, some of these integrals, some of this logic was... Lobital's... This this was a weird problem. We're using Lobital's rule to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Like, it's doable. It's not something that most students would think of, I think. But... You know, maybe you got it. I don't know. And if you saw any mistakes I got, please comment about that. If you think there's an easier way to do any of these problems, please, if you think there's an easier way to do this problem, I would really appreciate that. Because that was long. Yeah, and maybe you want to make your own speed run so you can beat me. I would appreciate seeing that. So yeah, just comment below. Tell me about any mistakes I made so that I can figure out what my penalties should be. And I will see you next time.